So what we're going to be doing today is installing a Traction Concepts LSD conversion kit in the Ford EcoBoost all-wheel drive 6F55 front diff. Now to get this front diff out of your transmission, you're going to have to split the case and uh, pull it out. <clears throat> so what we have here is the LSD conversion kit from Traction Concepts. This has the heavy duty springs rated for 600 plus horsepower you wanna throw at it. I'd say even 550 plus. Um, they do have a light duty version that is about 350 horsepower. Um, so yeah, this is gonna fit every EcoBoost show, um, let's see, Explorer, Flex, Edge, um, and the MKS. So this here is a GM 6T70, um, 75 front diff. And the reason it's sitting here is because um, this particular LSD kit is specifically for this diff. Now this is the GM cousin of our Ford transmission. Um, and you know, beyond it looking the same, I decided to buy it and took some measurements. This housing, you know, um, and these axle gears, spider gears, this uh, shaft pin is all the same. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, here I already have the gears out of the Ford 6F55 diff. I have the shaft pin here and the cotter pin that I already took out. So I'm gonna show you guys how to remove that. And I'm gonna show you, demonstrate it on this GM. So essentially, you know, you take your uh, driver's side axle. Goes in here in the transmission. And it turns the gears. So first thing we want to do and what I'm going to show you is how much I had to resurface the axle and spider gears to get the LSD to fit. But before we get there, let's take a look at this. We need to remove this cotter pin, which is only on one side. And then we need to get this um, shaft pin out. So what I did was I went to Lowe's picked up a little punch set. Unfortunately, all I could find was, you know, something to this effect. Um, this is um, five thirty seconds. It's only gonna go in so far because the base of it is so wide. Um, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. Um, I like to get it from the back and push it out the front. And to do that, uh, you know, I can only go so far with this to get it started. And then what I did was I took a little Allen wrench, cut the top off, and then I just stick it in there and hammer it the rest of the way out. So see if I can position this like so. So I'm gonna turn it upside down. See if you can see that, yep. Kind of in my exhaust is right there. Okay. You can see that we started it. The cotter pin's starting to come out. So this Either goes well or I kind of struggle with it, but take this little Allen wrench be modified. So I don't want to smash my fingers, but I'm just trying to steady it in between my two fingers. Boom, get the cotter pin out. 
Now in some videos I watched to do this, they actually took um, like a, a brass hammer or like a brass pipe and a brass hammer. I did pick this up from Lowe's. I think it was like six bucks. Just this, uh, I needed something that was about a little bit smaller than the diameter of the shaft pin. Um, this is what I got. But with our finger, we can push this right out. So here is the shaft pin. It only goes in one way. Obviously the hole lines up with this hole. Um, you can push it in this way or push it in that way. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so we got the shaft pin out, cotter pin. Put these tools aside. So we'll flip this over. And let's see, let's give you guys a good little show here. Now what to do, you just kind of spin this. Spin the whole assembly. And we're gonna take this piece out. It all just kind of falls apart now. Take this axle gear. The large gears are the axle gears, small gears are the spider gears. Each gear has a little clutch on the back, a little clutch, clutch plate. Um, it appears like it's stuck. It's just kind of, uh, because there's a transmission fluid on here, it's kind of like a suctioned to it, but it comes right off. Just want to make sure that you obviously have those on when you put it back inside or reinstall it. So what I did was I already figured out using digital calipers how much I needed to remove from the axle gear and from the spider gear. And that's gonna be in the picture below. Same thing for the spider gear. It'll be in the picture below with the tolerance. And I highly recommend taking this to a machine shop. It does say you can use a bench grinder. I just don't think you're gonna get within those tolerances with a bench grinder. So I chose to um, send it to a machine shop. Um, actually, a guy I met on Facebook um, locally, his name is Sloan Forstrom. He helped me out. He did a great job. So here is the, the gears after. So with the axle gear, you want to take all of this casting, get rid of it. And see there's like an arrow here and some numbers. Basically took that right off. You can almost see the very tip of a um, an arrow that used to be there. You need this to be flat. So when it goes on, the, when it's inside, you know, it's got full contact with the LSD. And these also have the, um, clutch plates on here you know they might fall off just make sure that you have them on there when you put them back in so we no longer need these GM parts so let's push that off to the side so if you got this far you got your Ford 6F55 diff ready to go you know you either machine these yourself or took them somewhere make sure you clean them off you might, it's even a good idea to, you know, dip your finger in some transmission fluid. Just kind of put it on there. Just kind of coat it, get a little bit slippery. Just makes everything easier. And what I've done too is I've um, taken my compressed air. I've like completely blown any like debris out of here, anything off the gears. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, so what I found to be the easiest way to do this, and actually what I'll do is I'll, Get this um, GM one out of the way. Let's get this Ford diff front and center. Take one of the axle gears, just kind of put it right inside. From here, I'm gonna have to put this camera down. We're gonna take another axle gear I got my clutch on there, let's put it in. And because of how much we've clearanced, this goes right in. 
I've seen other videos where they kind of rock one of the gears back and forth at an angle and get it in there. But this casting will not allow that to happen. I wasted so much time trying to get this in. And I was like, there's no way it's going to work. But I was like, wait a minute. It's clearance. It should fit right in. And it does. So just put one on the bottom, one on the top. Goes right in. So now we're going to spin it. And we're going to take one of the spider gears. Just kind of put it on there and hold it. And what I found to work best is rather than put this other spider gear on and leave the clutch on, it might, it binds a little bit full turn to get it in place. So I just remove it from one. And now I'm going to put it on this side and this gear on the other side, if it's not 100% straight across from each other, it's gonna have a hard time turning in here. So once you get that in there, you can just take this out. It's gonna get a lot tighter once we put this clutch plate back on. Now, this is normal to have a little bit of um, slop in here. That's how it is with the, cotter, the um, shaft pin in. So this, you know, kind of doesn't fit in. You just got to kind of wiggle it. And what I can see as the main hole is pretty much lined up. I mean, I can see right down there. Now we want to line up the sides. And we should be able to do that, well, by hand. Oh, a little bit too much. Right there. Now, if you have this in there and it doesn't line up, that means you've got, means to, you got to take one of these, one of these spider gears, um, you know, rotate the whole assembly back to the front where you can move it. That means one of the spider gears needs to go over like a tooth just on one side and then it will line up just like that. So we got it all lined up. We're going to take the shaft pin and we're going to start to work it in here. And might have to turn this on the side. Can be a little fidgety. So as we're pushing it in, you can see where this hole is. You can see that. Now we can turn it and line it up so that it lines up with that hole and push it in. So I'm gonna put this down real quick. Let's get this in there. Almost. Almost had it just right. If you got a pair of vice grips. Can turn it ever so slightly. Look at that, right on the money. So now I got everything lined up perfectly. The shaft pin is through. Everything looks good. So now we're gonna put this cotter pin back in. 
and we're gonna hammer that home. Here, we're just going to kind of hold this and slowly almost. Of course, I'm almost done and I'm going to screw it up, right? Sounds about right. Perfect. And there it is. It's flush with the bottom of that hole. So now we're going to pull the side pins. Or maybe not. So this should just come right out. We'll just get the other side first and then. You guys can see that? Yep. Just like that. Come on, this one just come right out. This one wants to fight us. And there it is. Traction Concepts LSD Conversion Kit in the Ford 6F55 Trans. Now what this means is it's gonna lock up when we launch. We're gonna get both tires spinning, which basically means way better traction. And, you know, we're still gonna be able to turn the wheels all the way and not have like one tire and wheel binding and like um, causing uneven tire wear. We are good to go. Now this is the best thing that I've found. Uh, really, you know, looking for, you know, some sort of alternative to possibly, um, you know, spending thousands of dollars, um, sending out the front diff to a company to have a custom LSD diff made. I mean, some companies wanted like 30 grand and, you know, a commitment to buy like 30 units, <clears throat> just not going to happen. And this isn't like some Chinese, uh, cheap, um, LSD block kit. You know, this is from traction concepts. It's going to cost about $400. Um, and let's, let's give it a whirl. You know, it's going to be a platform platform first. Uh, sorry, I'm excited. I can't really talk. Um, so I'm going to take the welded diff out of my trans because I'll just keep it as a souvenir. I'm kind of glad I didn't go that far. Um, not because I was worried about launching the car, but turning the car would be a nightmare. So now I'm going to be able to turn. I'm going to have all my fun at the drag strip, getting a better 60 foot. And let's go.